Greetings everybody, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the polybrush package which um, allowed me to create this small piece of terrain over here and paint on top of it without ever leaving Unity. So I think this is quite cool, simply because I don't want to have to install 2ds Max again or Blender, um, just to do some simple stuff that, that's for testing purpose. Now this package lets you actually sculpt within Unity, so you can actually modify the vertex within Unity, you can also elevate um, and, and lower the floor, you can paint vertex coloring, which is quite cool. Also, you can paint texture, which is why you see both texture over here blending. That's a simple mesh, and that's a material with multiple um, texture, as you can see over here. All right, so I'm a little bit sick and I'm on allergy pill, but we should be able to get this through, so let's get started. Today, though, what we're going to need is a couple of different package. I know we're doing polybrush, so we're gonna go at the top here, and we'll type in brush or poly brush and hope that it shows up so show preview packages and here it is i'm gonna hit install and then what i'll do once this is completed is i'll make sure to import at least one of the samples because we don't have shaders coming with that and we might want to have shaders so this project right now is on the standard rendering pipeline um however we could try the lightweight rendering pipeline maybe in the next episode or so but right now i'll be using everything standard so everything is on Everybody is on the same level, basically. So, is this completed? So, once this is completed, I think I have to close this. For some reason, I can't press the button. So, let me just close that, head over here, and type in polybrush once more. Here it is. Yep, now I can actually import in project. So, as I mentioned, I'm doing that to get the shaders behind it. Okay, now, the reason I want to play around with polybrush today and not with 3ds Max or not with Maya is simply because I want to be able to create a 3D mesh, get myself a nice Terran out there, without having to install any of those 3D software. I don't have them right now, and my setup is really temporary. So what I'll do is I'll use everything within Unity. Okay, so Polybrush. You are allowed to modify any type of 3D mesh with Polybrush. Our only problem right now is that the 3D mesh we have access to are the one built in the engine. So let's go ahead and say drop a plane. And with that in mind, we can then go ahead and create, not create, but open the poly brush window and then modify it as much as we want. But that, that is not big enough for me right now. That's not what I want to do. Um, there's not enough detail on that. So what I'm going to do is actually install ProGrid at the same time. So I'm going to go over here, um, type in ProGrid and ProBuilder, both of them. And I'll go ahead and install that as well. As I mentioned, you don't have to do this if you have a base mesh to work on. But in my case, I don't, so I'm going to go lay that down with Pro Builder. So we usually install both of them, but you really don't have to use Pro Grid. Um, I just like it because everything is is snapped to a grid, <laughs> so that, that's really all it is. Okay, having that completed, we have the packages. I'm going to go over here under Tools. And this is not a Pro Builder tutorial, but let me go ahead and just create myself a new shape. I'll be using... Um, a plane, and I want to have a lot of segments, maybe 20, 20, something like that, and the width could be, we could do 20, 20, 40, 40, so we have a lot of subdivision. Right now, they're hard to tell because we don't actually see the grid, but if we put the selection wire on, this is how many vertex we have. So we have two vertex per meter, approximately, and that will do the job for me. So let me hit build, move this over. And here we go, so that's going to be the mesh I'll be using. Now, do note that there is a material behind it. There's the, the default material from ProBuilder, and we'll be changing that to make sure we can actually draw on it. So what we're going to be doing is I'll create myself a new material. Create. Call this something like Terran Material. And beneath it, I'm going to look for the Polybrush. Now, this is only here because we imported the... Um, the samples, so this is from the polybrush samples. And within that, we can find a couple of different things. We can use diffuse vertex color. So I'll show you what the vertex color is in a moment. Um, we are finally gonna use something like texture blending at the end. So we're gonna be blending the texture I've bought, and that's gonna be quite cool. So here we are with diffuse vertex color material. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this on my mesh, and we end up with something like this. As you can see, you don't we don't really see the texture behind because there's there's no more texture behind it, basically. We're using our own material this time. Now, um, this material, as it says in the name, uses vertex coloring. 
Um, if you're not familiar with vertex coloring, it's something that you really want to look into because it's quite something cool. It's information within the vertex. So this 3D mesh has a lot of vertex and every single vertex can hold a color and you can actually render, um, well, the color, if you have a proper shader that does it, you can render the color in your scene view based on the vertex color and that's what our shader is doing. So without further ado, I'm actually going to give you a real example. Let's go under tool, poly brush, pull out the window once more. I'm going to anchor it somewhere here and I'm going to skip something real quick. I'm going to go to the third section and, I, and draw some color on it so you can see. And this is not a texture. This is actually, as I've mentioned, these colors are baked in the mesh. So if you, even if you are to change the, um, the shader and put something else, this information stays within the vertex and that's something quite nice. Now, um, that's not what I'll be using for the rest of the tutorial, but let's go ahead and create ourselves. Say, um, I'm gonna quickly put that on flood, just put one color, something like that. Let's look at the poly brush, right? So we have our big plane over here. The first thing you might want to do is bring up the elevation or bring down the elevation. To do so, you have access to this section, the Sculpt on Mesh. Now, something, um, something I like to mention before we go any further is that for all the five sections at the top here, all the five modes, you're always going to have brush setting and also brush mirroring. So as you can see, I'm swapping through them, but the first two sections always stay the same. So this is really just to have your selection change. And here you go. So you can play around with this strength, of course. You know what this does. This is like, just like just like what we had with the Terran system with the previous um, previous way of doing things. Now, um, if you made a bump and you don't like it, you can hold Control, and it does the same thing, but in reverse, basically. And there you go. So that's all there is really to the first section. You can up, and you can also dig in the floor. Also, I did not mention it, but you can use brush mirroring to have this kind of effect. So if you want to go and build something at the same time on both sides, um, this is using your object's pivot point. Now, what you could do also is put that on camera view. So you see over here how I'm mirroring on the X axis. However, if we'd like to mirror using, say, my camera as this, um, as the center point, we can do that using this mode. Okay, so enough about these settings. Let's over to the smoothing. Smoothing is just like it sounds. You go over uh, areas that are already have different elevation and you can just smooth it up like so. It's much cleaner now, so it's much more smooth, right? And that is it for that. Next, let's go over here. And that is the cool part. This is, this is what I like the most. Vertex coloring. So this is where you get to actually um, change the information of the vertex itself. And you can do it uh, with alpha as well. So you can have a vertex that has like, say, half one color, half the other. And you could go ahead and actually paint real stuff with that. Now, the only problem with this, um, you, you could say, say, say you're like making a beach or something like that. If you don't have enough vertex, it is not going to look good. So if you don't have enough vertex, you're not going to have some nice texture blending. You're going to be able to tell from like far away that this shape is vertex coloring because this one blends with this one, this one blends with this one, this one blends with this one. It's, it's kind of evident as you could tell, but don't worry about that because we'll be able to change this and actually fix the problem using texture in the future. Your texture is going to add some additional definition that will not, um, that will not have this kind of effect. It's going to look much better. Now, having that said, let's move over to the fourth section of polybrush and that is Spawning prefabs, actually. So you could put prefabs in the brush um, with a certain weight. So you say you have more chances of spawning prefab A or prefab B and all, and, and you just be drawing prefabs with that. Um, we don't have any in this project right now, but let me go ahead and create a couple of ones just, just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna create myself a folder called that prefabs and I'll come back, I'll just create some random normal shapes. All right, so I went ahead and I created myself four different type of cubes, basically just a normal cube, and I just um, changed the size of it. And I'm gonna save them in my project. So here they are down here as prefabs. Now, this is very important because once we go ahead and open up the polybrush again, um, in under the fourth section, they ask for prefab down here. So they say drag prefab here. 
let's go ahead and drag our four prefab in here and we'll be able to see some preview. Now, um, I just realized that the only thing I've done over here is like change the, I've changed the, um, wait, how do you say that? The rotation and rotation is actually not being saved for one reason that I'll show you in a moment. But with that in mind, just so we can tell you how this feature works, you're going to have your mesh selected and then you're going to choose which one do you want to draw. So say I want to draw this one or this one. And I'd like to have a lot more cubes than rectangle. I can up the weight over here and maybe lower this one over there and then I'll have more chance of spawning cubes. And you can, as we've done earlier, you can actually reduce the strength of the brush so we have less, as you can see. Or we can up the radius and draw a couple of rocks on the beach. I don't know if this is going to be a beach, but right now it could be a beach. Why not? And we have very little chance of getting some of those rectangles. Let's put more. Okay. So you can actually draw prefabs. Like it's really useful for threes if you want to create a forest or something of the sort. Um, uniform scale, you can change that. I didn't know that. Actually, that's quite cool. Now, if you made some mistake and you can't do undo, you can hold control just like with the color brush and the uh, sculpt brush. You hold control and you actually remove what you've put. So that's quite nice. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to be making some sort of little beach over here. Um, so I'm going to go back under sculpting and sculpt a little bit of that, maybe down here. And like so. I don't know if my strength is on the minimum or maximum, but I'm going to try something out. I'm not really good sculpt, as you can probably tell already. But if we go ahead and just bump this up and here we can have a high, high ground. Now it looks a little bit weird simply because it's not smoothed yet. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth that up and then we're going to be changing texture. It's going to be quite fun. Um, how do I smooth over here using that? Right. There we go. So it's a lot better like that. And that could be our beach. Now, um, I'm going to quickly do a vertex coloring, like a blue vertex coloring over here where the water should be. So we're going to head over to the last section over here to the texture blending, paint texture on meshes actually. And we're going to start putting some texture in here. So what you can do is open up this section down here um, under your shader. So you have to have your mesh selected and then the texture over here. I don't think you can actually draw them in here. I don't think you can actually drag them in here. No, you can't. So you really have to change them within your shader. And how do you do that? Well, you open up your shader. Um, but you're going to realize that they're, they're asking for full texture. However, you only have one spot over here. And the reason is this shader, this very specific shader doesn't really care about diffuse texture. It doesn't care about, you know, like actual data on that PNG image. It only cares about data on the vertex itself. And that's how it color itself. Well, we're going to have to change shaders. Let's go over to Polybrush and we could be using, um, texture blend with vertex color could be funny. Tripanner Ben could also be cool. So the difference in between the two is that they're going to have texture, like the Tripanner Blend is going to have texture and that's it. But if you use, say, Texture Blend with Vertex Color, you're going to be blending texture, but then there's going to be like an influence of the, of the Vertex Color on top of that. So let's try both. Let's start with the Tripanner Blend. And then you're going to see that there is quite a lot of nothing. <laughs> so. We're going to need the first texture. What is the first texture? Let's use a like, desert. That looks fun. And it didn't actually update. So I get this problem with the new version of the engine. I actually have to drag it here, but that'll do the job. And then you're going to realize over here that it has been updated. So if we go, we can actually paint texture this time. So this could be like the desert part. And then in the water would be the smooth sand. And if we zoom in, you're actually going to see the difference in between the two, how they merge with each other and they actually merge with opacity. Let's do something else for the water. Let's actually put some water in there. I know it's not, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but let's try it. Plus this way you're going to be able to see the difference in the blending. Oops. What we could do as we go up is just reduce the opacity, not the opacity, yeah, reduce the strength of our brush and maybe just go do something like that. 
Oops. And that would be like the shoreline. And here we go. So that's how we do these things. Now, let me show you one last thing. As I've mentioned earlier, the information that we actually save within the vertex with vertex coloring stays within the mesh. It stays within the vertex itself. That's why it's called vertex coloring. So even though we just painted all over this mesh again, we can actually go and restore the information we've had with vertex color. It's still there. <laughs> that information is still baked within the mesh. Now let's go ahead and try texture blend with vertex color. So both of them at the same time. And you end up with something like this, which is quite, quite odd, but at the same time, it's actually quite cool. So you can have your texture and have an effect on top of that. So if you say, Hey, this water over here, I'd like it to be a lot more blue, <laughs> but use the same color at the end, like use the same texture. You can, you can do that. It uses the same texture at the background, but then the vertex color affect it a little bit more, a little bit more. So it's, it's more blue basically, but it's the same texture. And the funny thing about that is you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to re-edit your texture. You don't have to make your mesh once more. You draw this directly on the mesh that you want to be, um, well, the one that is affected basically. So I thought that was very, very nice. And if you want the sun to be a little bit more white, you can go ahead and do that as well. If you'd like, if you'd like to do that. And now with everything done, I'd like to thank everybody who is pledging on Patreon. We've got a new Patreon um, last week, so I was quite happy to see that. Thank you guys for making this possible. The names are on the screen right now. And also thank to everybody else who just helps me run the Discord community and helps the, uh, well, the growth of the channel by subscribing, liking, and also leaving comments. That actually gives you XP on the website. So again, thank you so much to everybody and I'll see you very soon with probably some shader tutorial. I'd like to go and actually explain what vertex color is a little bit more, maybe using some shader examples. That'd be nice. Hi right, guys, I'll catch you later.